What's up and welcome to another edition of Convict Inc. I'm your host, Robert Rosso. If you have not sus subscribed, I always have to stop because I say that word so messed up. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please do so. If you like this video, please share it. Please share it anyway. Um, and like it. That's what I was trying to say. Listen, first of all, let me, let me say this. It's Mob Monday. There's a humidity level in this area of like 90%. It just poured rain. I'm fat, so I sweat. So if I keep doing this a lot, it's because I'm freaking sweating. I got a little fan blowing, but if I put it up another speed, it'll be too hard. What the hell is this, a tag stuff? All right. Um, okay, so let me let me do this too before we get off onto the subject. Um, talked to my good friend Dusty today, and I just wanted to give a shout out to his family, his brother Peanut. Um, is another one that uh, lost the battle of opiate addiction. And um, sorry for the family. And uh, just two things happened when, when I heard that, because I've known this guy, you know, we did a lot of time together. It was just my heart broke for the family because he just, the last 10 days, he's been going through it. And just, uh, it, it gave me goosebumps to think about, like that could have been me or him, you know, like that was supposed to, well, first of all, I wasn't supposed to get out, but we, did a lot of opiates and heroin in prison and you would think that right now when we got home that would be like something we'd be struggling with and both of us are not we struggle with other demons um that's all i'll say but uh, you know we we were we were we were guys on the needle and um you know we've we've got out and we both have totally missed all that and i'm and i'm so fortunate i'm so happy but at the same time it's just wow it's a little bit of a it hits close to home when it hurts and just to think of I kind of grew up with this guy hearing stories about his brother and his success and well he, he grew marijuana too <laughs> legally and illegal whatever but just to just just to hear that now kind of just broke me I am late tonight and the reason I'm late is because we've had tornado warnings um, in the town that I'm in it's there's mountains around me and there hasn't been a tornado since like uh, that hit that have devastated this town since like the early 1900s I think and the theory is because of the mountains, if one gets in here, it'll bounce and just wipe everybody out. So we had phones going off, uh, sirens in the town. I mean, serious ones. And then there was big, huge hailstorm. And of course, my wife, oh, I want to see a tornado. <laughs> no, you don't. Oh, I want to see. It's, it's not like the movies, Marta, uh, you know, they can kill you. Um, so uh, it was... It looked, it looked like something out of biblical times. Uh, there was so much water in the streets and everything. Anyway, it, it, the storm let up. It ended and like the sun peeked over and I said, babe, here's the calm before the storm. Let's, I'll show you something because I've seen this before here. And that is when you hear a calm and then you look outside and if you see clouds on that end going one direction, this end going, and then you look over here and it's going this direction. Okay, so it's it's trying to form and swirl. I don't know the technical terms, but that's what was going on. And you know what? Uh, I live in well, all behind me is country. It's uh, so there's there's like a neighbor down there. There's one that just moved in over here. There's you know, but there's trees across. You can see trees and stuff. Anyway, um, you can see the people that are from this area, and you can see the people that are from out of town. I'm originally from California. Martyrs from Spain, and there's a family down the street from Michigan, and I don't know. I forgot where they're from over there uh but guess who was outside looking at the clouds <laughs> everybody that didn't live here <laughs> you know oh look look whoo here comes the tornado it's gonna kill us wow that's what that's morons all of us okay so uh anyway yeah so this is gonna be about mark Ryder. uh but before I, I still have to so i have to do more carmine russo I am addressing, I'm addressing, I think it was a family member or friend of Carmine Russo. I mentioned it last week in the video in regards to Jimmy Ida. Uh, it's in my comment section, uh, what the guy said to me. Uh, really wants me to take that video down. I told him that I'll go back and take a look at it and see what I said. Excuse me. Um, God, I just ate too. I was coming on here, I just eat or I'm drinking something, I'm burping and farting not my fart. Uh, I, I, did, I actually never went back and looked at this video. I've never even seen that video. Man, there's so many, I, the last probably f bunch of videos I haven't watched that. 
I want to say this. So, I never meant uh, for, for Carmine to be shed in a bad light in that video. And again, I, I didn't go back and read it, but I know what the guy said. And what I did was I happened to reach out to, of course, uh, my friend Dusty. So there's about one, two, three, four guys I can talk to that I did time with at Lewisburg that all knew who Carmine Russo was. I got quotes from three. Uh, so I asked them, hey, did you guys see that video? Yeah, I saw the video. So what did you think about Carmine? So this is what happened. Um, and like I said, there was never any disrespect meant towards Carmine. I liked Carmine. Did I say he was a little goofy or something? And I think that's what might have pissed, uh, made made him upset. Um, it's like a Hans Graz son the week before. Uh, man, did it bother me that, that that somebody's son would reach out and you know because I had to think, wow, if that was my dad, yeah, it it did. I'm not letting it change me, but it's like. And then I thought, hey, uh, your your dad shouldn't be in prison telling stories if that's if he wanted to take that route and do the innocent thing or whatever, then he shouldn't have. Because I'm not putting something out there. I'm never going to put something out there that just made up out of thin air or something. It's not it's not happening. So with Carmine, uh, so I asked, what, what did you guys think? Everybody was in consensus. And by the way, when I say everybody. This is almost a little setup here, what I'm doing, because everybody's gonna be on here. I'm gonna be doing interviews soon. Everybody wants to be interviewed that I know, that I've done time with, they will. Uh, you know, I've got, I've actually got a list. And of course, the reason I'm just not doing it is because I still have this house in disarray. Yes, I'm, all kinds of things. The, actually the floors in that other room is uh, almost done. And that's what putting everything down, but still. If you have some artist, she wouldn't say that. She's not happy about this remodeling situation. Carmine. Total goofball. Goofy. Dumber than dumb. I can't believe that he was hired in the mafia. And I'm not even going to say that one. So I, I was like, okay, everybody liked him. Okay? So... And this, maybe I'm throwing, adding insult to injury. That's not what I, I'm saying is that people have a certain opinion or a, a, um, a belief or not a certain opinion. When people see somebody in a certain light in prison, I can't change that. Okay. Everybody liked Carmine. How he was perceived. I'm sorry. I, I just read all, and th those were the nice ones. And they weren't being mean to put the guy down. So I, I really do apologize to that person. And I know, so don't say, Lord, don't let the trolls get you. It's not about trolls. It's about perception or images or who people on the street might want to believe somebody is. But when they go to prison, there's somebody totally different. And I'll get further into it. I gave somebody big props that was in a really big position. Um, I'm not even going to say really big position. Um, on the outside, gave pro you know, you know, so hey, how come you didn't talk about when the N word slapped the piss out of him and he didn't do anything? So I can be tell I knew about that story when I was telling when I was giving somebody's props, or how, how come he never stood up for white guys in the white TV room? Um, and this is again, this talking about somebody I give total good, total props to. I know I knew about those stories too. Uh, I didn't see those things happen and I I was just kind of putting something out there in that video again so what you people perceive about somebody on the street is not necessarily what we saw in prison of people that goes for the ABs the mob the motorcycle gangs the dirty white boy whatever you people may think a guy may be a Sammy the Bull stone cold killer Joey Tesson on the street and I know it really hurts people to, to actually have to listen to, wow, that guy got be slapped by a black guy and he, he's the biggest of da-da-da-da. Or, wow, John Gotti, who everybody believes is like the, the, the mob, oh, he was like the, the, the epitome of stand-up guy. Epitome of stand-up guy. Paid the Aryan Brotherhood for protection. Punk in prison. Punk in prison, sorry. That's what it, that's, I know what he was on the outside. I know he made people dance in a bar and was going to shoot his feet. I actually know somebody that happened to. Uh, 
Carmine Persico hated that man. The, the, the dapper Don, total jackass, putting a, blowing the mafia up by wearing suits and hey, and running around with the media. What a jerk off. I'm sorry. I, I, that's the truth. Uh, maybe he's a stand up guy, but he was bowing down in prison. It is what it is. Um, and as we go into the whole perception angle, uh, I will say this, there's a story going to be coming up about how the dirty white boys ran the Aryan Brotherhood of Victorville, and that's going to set the internet on fire, I promise you. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I just, I, I was almost laughing today, so this is Mob Monday. Mark Ryder, who was Mark Ryder? Old John Gotti's sidekick, uh, sold heroin, big heroin dealer back in the 80s. You guys can go look it up on the internet. Connected to Nikki Barnes. Was Nikki Barnes, was he indirectly involved in ratting Mark out? Possibly. Called Mark the Jew in prison. Uh, Mark Ryder, associate of the Gambino crime family. So uh, Angelo Ruggiero, is that what it is? So uh, these stand-up guys who had morals and codes in the mafia that they weren't supposed to deal drugs, um, they were fun. Was, was Ruggiero part of the heroin ring? Was Gotti part of that heroin ring? Um, they wouldn't lie to their boss with all their morals and principles that Mark Ryder actually wasn't selling heroin or stopped selling heroin ever. According to Mark Ryder, who I know personally, big pals with Gotti in the heroin business and everything else. Um, so, uh, whatever. In prison, Mark got life sentence. He's 74 years old now. He's at Allenwood Low. So Mark gets a life sentence and at some point he ends up at USP Allenwood. This goes back to the 80s, early 90s. Uh, Mark's son got killed by a per or somebody had Mark's son killed, or they killed Mark's son, or the guy had the son killed. The guy was at USP Atlanta with Mark. Mark paid. Um, stop. It is alleged that Mark Ryder paid members of the Aryan Brotherhood to then kill the guy who had his son killed or killed his son. Um, so that happened in the 80s. Mark ends up, uh, I think he was a Terra Hut at some point, USP back in the day. I caught up with Mark Ryder um, in 2004 or five. I think it was five, five at um, USP Lewisburg. Him and some others were sent from Terre Haute, I believe. There was like some kind of race riot. Uh, involved in Big Jerry and some other white guys got in a fight on the handball court. I think Mark was transferred at that, but he, he had a sidekick named Little Mark. Now Mark, or Mark the Jew, is a real tall guy. Uh, in prison, he was, he ran gambling operations. That's, that's, that was his thing in prison. Made a lot of money doing it. There was a guy named Miles Coker, another heroin deal out of New York. He was the gambling, he, he had the biggest ticket. And let me tell you what I did. So I was a big gambler in USP Lewisburg. $600 minimum a night, single bets. Um, so I did single picks, put down, lay six, win five. Basketball over and unders, I almost couldn't lose. I used to run Toronto uh, over on the road or under on the road over at home or vice versa. And I did that for like three years. And I just knocked them dead. Uh, really, really, I was, I was fantastic at basketball under and overs and everything else I sucked. Mark, Miles had a ticket. That was my go-to guy because I can. Uh, I, I never needed to put any money down with Miles, and he had an old man on our block from Connecticut. Everybody called Toke. He was mob tied in Connecticut. Uh, Toke used to. So I, I can go in at any time, like at ten o'clock at night, four doors back, and say, "Hey, write down, you know, Lakers in the under, blah blah blah," and he would just give it to to Miles the next day. That's the kind of trust they had, and that's the kind of trust they had in me. Uh, Mark lived over in E Block, and him and Little Mark started their ticket that was kind of a rival to Miles Coker. And uh, they had different lines. And then there was, oh, what was the Puerto Rican guy out of New York? It was a Latin King, I believe, man. And he, so it was them three were the biggest ticket. I had the biggest tickets in Lewisburg at that time. Macho, not macho. Uh, uh, anyway, what I would do is they all, because I had a big store, they, they wanted me to kind of be their ticket runner. Again, I had the biggest store, if not the uh, basic, a guy, a Latin king out of New York had a pretty big one. Uh, but on my end, for sure, bar none, the biggest store in Lewisburg, uh, had shelves put up in my, it was just, uh, I had a huge 7-Eleven. So I can put tickets out 
like on my table. It was a self-serve store. I didn't stay in myself. Guys would come in, grab something and write whatever they wanted down. Um, worked. It was really good for a long time until they knocked me off because everybody owed me too much money. What I started doing, this is a scumbag move. It's a dirty white boy thing, right? That's what you guys can say. So I would take the tickets and they all had different lines and I would do freeze outs. So rather than get their book of stamps or whatever they wanted, because they wanted me to do cash and carry, I, I I had freeze outs. I would use their tickets and say, hey, pick the best line. Which which line do you guys like? Of course, they picked the most favorable line. And I'd say, okay, a freeze out is betting on credit. So how, how much of a freeze out do you want? $100 freeze out, $200 freeze out, whatever. And uh, that is, they reach $200 first or uh, they lose $200 first and we pay each other. So I was, I was kind of a, uh, I would take a few dollars in for all of them, but I was using their, I was using their lines. I didn't have to do nothing, but just run a freeze out. And I made, made a fortune off that. <laughs> fortune. Uh, Mark got hip to me doing this. He got wind of it and was a little salty. Now, Mark played tennis. Lewisburg had tennis courts and he was a big, big tennis fan. Uh, player. Uh, so that was his thing in prison. Not a weight guy. Uh, I was a walker. Uh, I had back surgery when I was a kid, so I never got on the weights. Did a lot of burpees uh, my first seven years. Not so much at Lewisburg in the last couple. I just kind of became a snossage. Ate a lot of food and, uh, you know, walked and got high. Well, high on and off, drank on and off. So, yeah, Mark pulled me up about it and asked and confronted me about it. And uh, matter of fact, I think he got the... Did he get Miles involved? Miles really didn't care. I think he got the Puerto Rican guy involved. Long story short is, yeah, of course, of course I cop to it right away. Yeah, okay, so somebody say I can't run freeze outs and using your lines. So the thing is, is, you know, people pay to get the lines and I'm doing everything for free. So what I end up doing, uh, because I was wrong and I made a lot of money, uh, Mark, there was a pair of tennis shoes that you could not get on this compound. Uh, Airs or I, I forgot. I'm not a big. T I don't know the 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 sports tennis shoes like that. Um, I wear Timberlands and Skechers. That's what I wear on the streets. I used to wear Vans, uh, boots, and you, you know, as a, I was younger, I was a surfer, so I wore still wear shorts and t-shirts a lot and all that stuff. So I bought Mark Ryder this pair of shoes, and it cost. They wanted five hundred dollars for these shoes. That's how expensive they were in prison. I get it to them for three fifty. Uh, you know, he was happy. I think I gave him to him for Christmas, and I and I, I forgot. I think he was Hanukkah guy. <laughs> Don't really know, but Mark. Uh, so there's really not a lot to this, other than Mark was the associate of. I mean, just a close, close friend of John. I spoke highly of John. Uh, they were all involved in their own business. I mean, there's an indictment with Ruggiero or whatever his name is. But don't, don't, don't let, well, there's, we know we can watch mob stories and see that uh, Gotti and them were upset because uh, Big Paul was talking about the no drug policy and that was going to come back on him and blah, blah, blah. But morals and principles and all that stuff about, yeah, morals and principles of followers. There is no principles. There is no rules. There is no code. There's not. There is, but, but, but everybody follows it until they don't. <laughs> What, that's what happens. And it's a good example to have an associate of the Gambio crime family being a Jew guy selling heroin. So, that's pretty much about it. Uh, just telling my experience with Mark Ryder, uh, alleged to have had the Aryan Brotherhood kill the guy who killed his son. Now, I'm going to go ahead and elaborate right there. He's got a life sentence for drugs. There's murders involved in too. He's hit. He's done. He was been in since he he is not getting out. Never thought he was going to get out. He told me, "Why don't you go kill the guy yourself? Why don't you go kill the guy yourself?" Associate of the mob, played off the Gambino's coattails, right? Why don't you go kill the guy yourself? Why'd you have to have the Aryan brother to do it? Or was he paying protection to the Iron Brotherhood, really? Like Gotti. Like a lot of people in prison, alleged some members of organized crime, do. I 
talked to somebody else, one of the other guys today, and said, hey, did you, when you do Mob Monday, are you going to talk about all the mob guys that, that get extorted in prison on the soft press? I haven't. I don't know if I will. doesn't really matter. I know Call My Personal never did. I know God he was paying. I know Mark Ryder paid somebody. Is what it is, right? Carmine Russo, 78 years old. If you see this, because the, the family member said, Carmine, I have absolutely nothing against you. Liked you. You've always uh, liked you. Um, never meant no harm. Is what it is. You're a good guy. Jimmy Ida should have never did tortured you like he did. Never. And he did torture you. You know what, exactly what I'm talking about. It was a mental, you were just mentally screwed up. When you couldn't even go to your cell all day long because of that guy. That's terrible. Shame, shame, right? Have a good one. Tomorrow, my goal is to get up in the morning and create enough content for the week. I have to do some lives at some point, And I have a whole bunch of interviews. Getting ready. Oh, tomorrow I got to go probation. Well, I got a lot of stuff to do tomorrow, too. Take care.